even considering all its problems, OBS is an absolutely fantastic project and a fantastic piece of software. While over on the Windows side, tools like XSplit have existed for basically just as long, over on the Linux side, it pretty much revolutionized desktop capture. Sure, things like FFmpeg, Simple Screen Recorder, and all of the various recording tools did exist, but nothing at the level of OBS. And on the Linux side, packages for OBS exist on basically every distro under the sun. Whether it's Ubuntu, Gentoo, Arch, Void, Fedora, doesn't matter what you're using, you can find a package for OBS. But the only official way to install OBS on Linux is through the PPA on Ubuntu and its derivatives. But coming very shortly, that's no longer going to be the case. Not that the Ubuntu version is being removed, that's definitely not what I'm saying. It's just that a second official package is being added. So that official package, as of OBS 27.2, is going to be the Flatpak version. Now, a Flatpak version of OBS does already exist. It's just that the OBS team is going to be changing the way the tooling is being done to pull directly from the GitHub, allowing them to add in some really, really awesome features. Now, for most programs out there, I don't care about official packages, and I don't think you should care either. If I cared about them, I would run Ubuntu, and half my applications would be installed through Snaps. Instead of that, I run Arch Linux, and have a bunch of applications installed from the AUR, the Arch User Repository, where most of the applications in the AUR are packaged by random people who like the application. Sure, some things are packaged by the developer, but that's sort of the exception rather than the rule. OBS is one of those very few edge cases where official packages actually do matter. So firstly, OBS has a module system. So when you're compiling OBS, you can say, I don't want this part, say the browser plugin or the virtual camera, things like that. And then it just doesn't get compiled into the application. If you're never going to use it, there's no point having that running in the background and just wasting system resources. While this is great for users who may want to compile the application themselves, what it also means is that different distros can package OBS in completely different ways, leading to an inconsistent experience. Take, for example, Arch Linux, which I bring up very often when I talk about OBS. Basically, for the browser extension in OBS, it requires CEF Minimal, but it's a different version of CEF Minimal than is available in the Arch repos. So rather than actually fixing the problem, even though someone has given them a patch, instead what they did is just disabled that section of OBS so they just don't have to fix it. That is a pretty big problem because what this lets me do is embed web frames into OBS. So I can do things like have my chat window always on my OBS window. Normally, you guys wouldn't be able to see this. This is only visible to me. Maybe on the other side, I want to have things like recent events so I can see like who's donated, who's followed, things like that. And besides that, it lets me do things like have alerts. So if someone follows me or someone tips things like that, I can show that on my stream. A basic feature which after six months, everybody expects to be available inside of OBS. So to get features like this actually working, I've had to go and get an AUR version that has all of these options actually enabled. But then the problem with the AUR is some of them have extra plugins that aren't available inside of the base version of OBS, giving you a different sort of inconsistent experience. While you can certainly make docs for sites like Twitch, YouTube, and Restream, which I've done on my system, it doesn't always play out as nicely as you'd like it to because... These sites are designed around a regular sized web browser, so having it in this small dock window doesn't always play that nicely. So in the official version of OBS, it also provides the ability to directly log into these services and have the information shown in a way that fits the OBS window. Now, unsurprisingly, doing this requires some level of API keys and secrets, and you can't reasonably include this in the source code so they're only available in the PPA. I wouldn't be surprised if in the future more integrations are added to other popular services, things like Facebook for Facebook Gaming and TikTok, because apparently TikTok has live streaming now. Now, you may not want or need some of these extra features, and you may not really care that it's inconsistent between different distros because all you do is press the record button and it works. 
and that's absolutely fine. In which case, go and compile it from source and get rid of the things you don't need or don't want, or use one of the existing unofficial packages that does what you need it to do. In my case though, I do want them, and I think this is a super cool change. One thing I really need to clear up is there's been this story floating around about why they specifically went with Flatpak over any of the other packaging systems they could have used. This story, from what I can see, is completely fake and is just linking two completely separate events. So recently Red Hat donated $10,000 to the OBS project and people are saying this is the reason why Flatpak is going to be the official version for Linux. This is due to the fact that Red Hat puts their support behind the Flatpak project. Now the problem with this is that while making a new Flatpak can be done in a couple of hours or really even an hour, Redoing your toolchain to make it so all of this is done automatically is a much bigger project. This is something they've been working on for the past couple of months, and this donation just came basically out of nowhere. Sure, it might be related to the flat pack being made, but it's not the reason why the flat pack is being made. And this isn't just me saying this, multiple members of the OBS team have said exactly the same thing. So Dodge Pong, otherwise known as Ben Terrell, one of the main guys in the OBS project said, they didn't buy a feature request, they just made a donation. The donation was not for Flatpak support, the two things are completely unrelated. A random redditor comes in and says, no, you're wrong, there's obviously more going on here than what is being said obviously not knowing who Dodgepong is, and then Dodgepong replies by saying, I'm telling you as the literal human that authored both this tweet, that was the announcement of the Flatpak support, and then this tweet, that being the donation, with his own two hands that the two announcements are not related. We're as surprised by this donation as anybody, as we've never had any contact with anybody from Red Hat. Honestly, the Flatpak tweet wasn't even an announcement, just a response to something I happened to see float by on my feed. You may not trust the OBS team or trust Ben Terrell, and that's fine, but I'm going to take him at his word. Also, I really like the news site Gaming on Linux, along with its writer Liam Dore, but he's been sharing around this exact same idea as well, saying in his title, Red Hat donate $10,000 to OBS, their flat pack to be official for Linux. Now, in the article itself, he doesn't explicitly say that the reason for the flat pack is because of the donation, but Liam, you've been around long enough to know that most people just read the headline and just assume that that's what the article's about. Granted, there is a clarification comment saying the PPA is not going away, but if you stopped reading at the title, you're never actually going to see that. I know there's going to be some people saying they don't like any sort of containerization for desktop applications. They don't like flat packs, snaps, app images, anything like that. They want every single application to be a regular package on the system. And ultimately, I feel like that would be the best option. So an official package on Arch, Fedora, obviously on Ubuntu, Gen2, Void, and anything else out there. The problem with that, though, is it's not really viable. Sure, there's no benefit you really get from the flat pack containerization, but OBS, even though it is a massive open source project, still has a limit to its resources. Every single district that has its own packaging and repo system is going to require a new pipeline being developed and also maintained to make sure the application is always available in its official form on that repo. This would be a massive expenditure that I don't really see any point to be made. I'd rather see that funding going towards doing useful things like adding in new features or adding in bug fixes, which in some places it desperately needs. Personally, I don't hate most of the containerization solutions. I don't hate flat packs. I don't hate app images. I don't hate Docker. Snap, well, that's a whole nother topic. I've talked in the past about why I don't like snaps anymore. But even though I don't use these as my primary solution to get applications, if they are the only option available or the best option available, I'm going to use them and that's perfectly fine by me. I do currently have a version of the Flatpak OBS installed. Obviously, it's not the official version, it's just the latest version available. I just want to see if there's going to be any weird quirks with the Flatpak, whether it was going to be sort of extra laggy or there's going to be some weird delays somewhere or maybe some prompts wouldn't work. 
for the most part, it works exactly as I'd expect. So when the official version does come out, I will be migrating to it and I'm going to be perfectly happy using it. At least as happy as I am using the version I'm currently using. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use OBS? And if you're not on Ubuntu, are you going to be switching over to the Flatpak version? Because some of these features actually do sound kind of compelling. If not, why not? I don't know, maybe you just don't actually stream and all you do is video recording so these stream integrations just don't really make any sense. I would love to know. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scrubster and Barrow Pay linked in the description down below. I've got my podcast and my gaming channel down there as well. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.